Hello. Well, we're starting with chapter two. Okay. And in chapter two, we're going to be selecting objects and using some shortcut keys. The big thing is the selection tools because you'll be using those as we move along. But I want to show you the program we're using right now because Photoshop is so incredibly expensive. We, there's really no way we can ask you to have that at your home. Okay. But Photopea is an online program that is pretty similar. Uh, there are some differences, and you'll hear me grumbling about the differences as I go along. Um, but overall, there, things are fine. Like as an example, on the vertical dock on Photoshop, the Navigator tool showed as a steering wheel. Here, just NAV. So little differences. The history is over here. Um, some of the tools aren't as fleshed out. Basically, so I'm not trying to sound like it's a bad program because it's a great program, but it's it's not photo, as good as Photoshop, but... I've been talking to high school teachers, and there's a general agreement that they believe that if you get skilled here, that you'll be easily able to transition over to Photoshop for those other classes at the high school, which are starting with the assumption that you know how to use Photoshop. So, that being said, one of the things that you might want to do on this, first off would be to sign in. I'm purposely logging out. So, to sign in, okay, I come over here, and I click on Account. Some of the differences between the, this and the, and the full paid version, of course, the full paid version costs more money, but also is the ads. So there will be advertisements over here. Uh, the number of steps in the history, you see here that the full version has 60, ours has 30. To be truthful, that's not a big deal for us at this stage because there, you really aren't going to be doing anything with more than 60 steps. Uh, there are miscellaneous stuff here about differences, but I'm going to click on login. Log in of Google. Remember to use your school Google e account. Okay, so now I'm logged in. I'm going to close this box here. Next thing, I'm under more over here. You probably should go ahead and install Photopea. You can install it on a desktop computer or on your Chromebook. The advantage that will give you, right now it's running as a pure web app. So everything it's doing, it has to communicate over the web. And particularly if you don't have the world's best connection, of course, we don't hear either. But is it would slow, it's going to slow down. So if you install it, it's just going to run a little bit better. Now, I'm leaving it uninstalled because I want people to see if there are any issues. Uh, there's occasional lag and stuff. And it would work a little bit better if we did install it. It's a free program. Uh, and it's actually pretty good. You know, you'll hear me speak negatively, but it's actually a pretty good program. So we're going to be starting now. On chapter two, baskets. Okay, so I'm going to come down here to Photoshop images, chapter two. You see that I've compressed chapter one. All I did was came over here and clicked on the little triangle just to get it out of my way. Okay, baskets. Okay, so baskets.psd. Uh, here's where I want to make another comment. Some of you know you turned something in and you got a zero on it. You looked in the comments and it said no image. Okay, what may have happened? you may have accidentally uploaded the PSD. You need to be uploading the JPEG for these things, okay? So if you go in and fix that from the last assignment for Eagle or any of those others, you need to remember to send me an email telling me your name, what block you're in, and which one you fixed. Because if you uploaded a PSD, I can't see it. You'll need to be uploading JPEGs. Okay, I'll get to that later on. Right now, we are downloading or pulling into our computer, so we're going to download baskets.psd. And here we go. Good. Now, don't close this. Click on that upward pointed arrow, the carrot. Click on show in folder. Okay, here we can see where it is. It's in the download folder. There's also one other kind of neat thing to make it easier to find this program, and I'll show that to you in just a moment. So I came over here to Photo P, and we want to work on baskets. Now, you can come over here and file, open, and search, and you can usually find it. Um, because I typed in baskets, it really narrowed it down for me really well. That's because I want to show you something different. Okay, So I'm going to click over here, and these are all my downloads. I come to the baskets that I just downloaded, press and hold, left mouse button down, drag it in. There it is. It's in. So either coming over here and selecting open and finding it would have worked or dragging it in. Now, getting rid of this bar, you're just going to click on that little X right there to get rid of it. I want to get rid of that, so I'm going to click over here somewhere. Okay, so some of the first things we're going to do here are bait of opening the file, 
turning on the rulers. If you can't see your rulers, press Control R. Okay, difference, you know, Control R. See, see what I'm doing? You need to be able to see those. Okay. Okay. So then, first thing we're going to be doing is using the rectangular marquee tools. We talked about a marquee in the previous class. A marquee is simply a board, the border of a selection. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangular marquee tool. I'll just press the letter M, and there's only two marquee tools, so it's real easy, the rectangular. Now I'm coming over here to this basket here. I want to be so that I'm clear of that edge, okay? See what I'm saying? But close. So I'm going to come up to about here, so I'm clear of the top, I'm clear of the edge. Press and hold the left mouse button down, and I'm going to tell you I think that's too close, okay? That right there is too close. I think I'll end up cutting it off, so I'm just going to control delta. Try it again. Don't worry about the fact. Control V. Okay, try that again. Yeah, that's good. Okay. There we go. So now I release the mouse button. Okay. Go ahead and use the move tool. I press the letter M for move. No, I didn't. Press the letter V for move. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to come over here to this. Press the left mouse button down on it. And move it. Now, if you suddenly have a giant black hole right here, okay, press the letter D on your keyboard and, and C, and first undo, Control Z, okay, then you would press the letter D, okay, for defaults. Try moving it again, okay. So, if you had a big massive black hole. Now, we need two of these baskets, okay. So, with this basket still selected, I'm going to press and hold the Alt key down. I'm going to press the left mouse button down. I'm going to move my mouse to the right. And when they're about even, I will release the mouse button, release the Alt key. This checkerboard. What's going on with this checkerboard is this is simply nothing. The checkerboard is indicating that it's transparent there, but there is nothing here. You basically cut it out of the paper and moved it over to here. So don't panic about the checkerboard. When we're close to the end, we'll be getting rid of any that are that's still showing. So again, it's not really a big deal to worry about. Okay, so that was the basket, the big basket and on the top. If you're wondering, I'm turning pages again. Um where am I at? It looks like I'm at about page number, oh, it looks like about 87, 88. They're talking here about the history book panel, and I'll, I'll go into that in just a minute. So the basket they're looking at doing next is this one right here. And to do this one right here, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select the quick selection tool. Okay? So quick selection tool. I'm going to put the tool, the circle there, over the basket. Don't put it out here. It needs to be over the basket. Press and hold the left mouse button down, and it still made a mess. Control D. Let's try that once more. There it went. That time it worked. Okay, hopefully you saw the difference. The first time I said, and it made a mess, it selected everything. You saw the marquee all the way around the image. So I simply did a quick undo, and then tried it again, and this time it worked. Now, I will tell you that in the book, they're telling you to do some work with the refine edges, okay? It doesn't work here. What they want to, to do, it does, it's nice, but unfortunately, it simply does not work here in what we're doing. You know, before I go any further, I'm going to change something, and I realize this isn't the book. I don't like how far apart these two baskets are, so I'm going to change that right now before we go any further. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to control Z, control D for deselect. Nope. Control Z. Okay. Also, or I could come up here and work my way up there. I, I'll use the rectangular marquee tool then. Okay, so M, M. About here. Nope. Control Delta. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, I don't like how far apart these baskets are. It's just not doesn't look like the picture in the book. Control Delta. I just brought them together a little bit closer. That's all. Okay, now I'm going back to the quick select tool. Little divergence there. Selected the basket right here. Now you may need to move the quick select tool just a tiny bit to get it to select all of the basket. It seemed to work for me here this time though. So I'm going to go ahead and select the move tool again. 
And I'm going to move this basket right about to, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm turning pages in the book, to right about here. Okay, that looks about where it is in the book. And I like that spot, so I'll go ahead and press Control V. Now, I'll show you what I'm doing to get rid of this here um, real quick because now it's down in this area. And if, again, if it's bugging you, the reality is this would never show when we print it. Okay, but it might be bugging some people, so I want to put white up here on top. So I press the letter X to switch to default color tools. See how those are switching back and forth? I'm pressing the letter X. I want white there. I want the brush tool here. And I'm just going to very carefully do this. That's right. We're painting it in. I'm going to zoom in a bit to get that right there. Come on, zoom tool. And hand tool. And brush tool. Okay, now I'm going to make that brush tool smaller. I'm using the square bracket keys that are next to the letter P. Again, do not panic. This will never show. It just is bugging me. Okay, there we go. Now, again, I go back to the move tool. Not because there's anything special about the move tool, but don't leave yourself sitting on a tool that will mess up your work. Okay, because like if the cat walks across your keyboard or something like that, it's very annoying. Control zero. Good. Okay. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to select this basket right here using a different tool. Okay. So again, I'm going to select the uh, zoom tool, come up here to this guy. And you see what I'm doing here to zoom in, by the way. I come up to about where everything I want to zoom in on is. I press and hold the left mouse button down and drag. Then I am going to have to use the hand to get it nicely centered. I could have also used the navigation tool over here and you know, done that. Plenty of ways to get it centered. There we go. Okay, and closing the navigation window. Okay, now this one, we're using one of the lasso tools. And the one they want us to use here is the polygonal lasso tool, okay? A lot of the automatic tools would not work here because this you've got basically a light color on a light color. And so almost all of the automatic selection tools wouldn't work in this situation. But this, in this case, you'll have to use a manual one. And again, we're using the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to move to the center of a flat area. And that's always the best place to start is a flat area. Now I'm going to click once. That was a left click. You notice it's leaving that line behind. Okay, now if I need to turn, I'm going to left click and move. So every time I turn, it plants a new anchor. Okay, and I can go ahead and sort of click my way around this box. Coming up here and there. There, 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 there. Now, once you're to the end, you've got them overlapped like this, and you can see that. Double click. Photoshop does work differently, so this is a difference. But once you're there, you're going to double click. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and Control Zero again. I leave that selected. I want to show you the next tool, and so I'm going to go ahead and select the Move tool again. I'm going to come up here inside the ruler. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down and I'm simply going to pull down and you see that turquoise bar. That doesn't print, okay? That's a guide bar. So I'm going to release it right there on the bottom corner of this basket. Now I'll grab this basket here and I'll move it down and notice when you're doing this it's like it almost snaps to that. In fact that's what it's called is snap to line, okay? So I'm going to snap it to that line right there Take a look in the book and see if that's exactly where they wanted it. So the book wanted you to see that snap to guide. Okay. Yeah, move it over a little bit, apparently. Okay. And once we've got that done, we've got the snap to guide. We're, we're going to go ahead and release the uh, marquee. Control D for deselect. I'm going to turn the lights back on. If you listen to these videos much, you will always hear me complaining about the lights going off every 15 minutes because it is annoying. Okay, so that one's in place. The next one we're going to do is this one over here. So I'm going to, again, choose the magnification tool. I'm just going to magnify on that. 
Then I'm going to just use the hand here to bring it in. Good. Okay. Now, this one has a lot of contrast between the basket and the background, so we can use one of the more automated tools. So I'm going to come over here, and this time I'm going to select the magnetic lasso tool. Okay. Now, this one works different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, start at a flat because that always seems easiest. Press and hold and work your way carefully around the outside of the basket. And you can see it putting anchors down. Oops. Well, that was okay. You can see it putting those little squares down, basically locking that point in. And you're trying to be very careful. Don't worry about going too slow. I mean, it's just go around the edge. See, I'm going around the edge until I'm overlapping that same square. Then I release. Okay, it didn't want to do it, so. Ooh. Okay, got to do it again. I, here is, here's the difference. What I did, if you were listening, I accidentally double clicked instead of single clicked. And that got rid of the... Don't worry if you have to do something over again. It's not like it hurts anything. Try to get close though. Try to keep that line right on the edge. Okay, now I go over the beginning, and yeah, release and click. Just one click, and that was the difference. Okay, control zero. Okay, now I'm turning the page again if you wonder what I'm doing. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool again. I'm going to go ahead and grab this basket, and I'm simply going to move it down to right about there. That's pretty close to what it shows in the book on page 100. Page 100 is one of those pages that have two number ones, but that's okay. Okay, I like it there, so I'm going to deselect Control Delta. The next one I'm going to do something to is this basket right here. So, of course, I'm going to zoom in on it. Use the hand tool now, drag it over, and I obviously zoomed in too much. Good. That's just about right. Okay, for this one, we're going to do something different. We're actually going to wind up using two different tools. The first tool we're going to use is the lasso tool. Lasso tool. Note, sometimes you hear me saying tool, and this says select primarily because I'm using the words out of Photoshop, the words that I'm familiar with. It means the same thing. Click on it. Now, don't get too careful on this one, as in make a nice big loop around it. Make sure you're not cutting into any basket with that loop. Get to the end, overlap the end, and release. Good. Next tool. This time we're going to use something called the magic wand tool. Okay. Want to make sure you've selected subtract right here. Okay. Third one over. Oh, third one over. Check contiguous. Contiguous just is a fancy word for next to. Now what this is going to do. Okay. It's going to sample at the very tip of that arrow. Okay. And it's going to remove everything that is touching that arrow that is that color all the way around. Or touching a cell that's being removed. Tolerance. Tolerance tells it how close it should be cutting things out. A low tolerance is going to only select things that are very close to the color you clicked on here. A high tolerance number is going to select more things. It's almost the opposite of the way it's, it seems like it should work. So knowing that, contiguous is checked. Okay. Subtract is checked. I'm going to click. You now see a marquee around the outside edges. Now I'm going to move the pointer inside of the handle and click. I'm going to move inside of here and click. The reason we did it this way, instead of just saying we'll erase everything that's that color, is there's a lot of light-colored stuff in this thing, and we don't want to get rid of all of that. Okay, control zero again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab that basket and move it to there. So, again, move tool. By pressing the letter V, grab that basket, and it looks like right about here. Good. And that's pretty close to where the... Uh, <clears throat> The book has it. Sorry about that. So, at this point, Control Delta. We've got one more to go. The plate. So again, we're going to use a different marquee tool. 
elliptical marquee tool, elliptical select, click on that. I'm going to start way out here, okay? I, and you're going to see in a moment what this does. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down, and you can see what it just did, okay? So now I want to move that circle. I have not released the mouse button. You can see that with the red circle. I'm going to press and hold the space bar down, and I can move that selection. Okay, I like where it is. I release the space bar. I release the mouse button. Now we're going back to the, to the magic wand tool. We're going to do something different here. This time we're going to uncheck contiguous. And let me go in here and show you why. Come on. Okay, control zero. I've lost the thing. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, hand tool. Here's the reason. We want to also get all of these white squares, okay? You're going to also be facing this on one of the assignments in this chapter called the tennis racket. That's another place where you will want to uncheck so that not only do you get the white here, but all of these squares are also empty. Now, I know that the marquee is way out there, so I know I'm safe right here and clicking on this. So you can see what it does. See, it automatically took out everything that was the color that I clicked on, okay? Control zero. Now, I'm gonna move the plate. Now, moving the plate, be careful that you have the point of the cursor over something solid. Make sure you're not over one of the holes. That's why I have the point of the cursor way up in this section right here. Press and hold the left mouse button down, and control Z. Okay, what I just did wrong, I forgot to make the move selective. That's the letter V for the move tool. Now, move the tip of the move tool. Okay, why this doesn't happen in Photoshop is in regular Photoshop, all of these tools have a slightly different cursor, and you can immediately see by what the cursor looks like. Not a big deal. So I'm going to come over here to a solid point on the basket, press and hold, and drag that basket right about to here. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Transform Controls. Now I'm going to hold the Alt key down. I'm going to come to a nice solid section there. Press and hold. Drag. So I've made a second plate. Release the Alt key. Release the mouse button. Now, move to the corner right here. And you see that diagonal arrow. Now, press and hold the Shift key. What the Shift key is going to do is it keeps the ratio of top to side the same. Okay, so right there, press and hold the Shift key. Press and hold the left mouse button, pull, turn, move it up just a tiny bit, and that's probably enough. Release the shift key, release the mouse button. Good. Now you can click on the check mark and in indicating that it's done, or you can just press enter. That does the exact same thing. Then again, move to a solid part on this plate right here. Hold the alt key down if you're left hand. Press and hold the mouse button. Drag down again. Keep these in a nice pretty line. Release the Alt key, release the mouse button. Lined up, press the Shift key, press the left mouse button, and again, just a little bit smaller. Mouse, Shift key, mouse button. Enter, and turn off Transform Controls so you can actually see what you're doing. And I don't like that. I'm going to move it a little bit down. No, I can't. Okay, because you see what happened there. It did that. So I can't move that. Not a big deal. Okay, so if in layers, which I'll talk about in the next lesson, you actually can. So now I want to deselect that, Control Delta. Good. Now we're almost done. We're going to crop it and put our name on it. So I'm going to come over here and select the cropping tool. I want to leave some space up at the top because I want to put my name up there. So press and hold the left mouse button down. Select. That looks good. That's about what I want to do. Hit Enter. Good. Control zero. Remember how we got rid of the white? We can do that again. It really isn't that important, but I'll do it. Okay, I want to make that circle bigger by pressing the square bracket key, uh, which is near the letter P, and paint over those. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. They won't show up when you're done. Not on this particular assignment. Okay, so that's good. Now, the next thing I want to do is just what I said. I want to put my name on it. So I'm going to come over here and click on the type tool. 
Okay, so I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to find a font that I kind of like, okay? So don't pick something that's excessively thin, and you'll see why in a few moments. But go ahead and pick one that you think looks okay. Um, what did I choose here? I'm trying to remember which one I chose and chose. I think I chose that one. Okay. Um, I'll just tell you, you're going to set the size to about 85, but in a moment you're going to see. Actually, I'm going to purposely crank that up because I want you to see what happens and how to fix it. Okay. So um, also, now I want to choose the color for my font. Now, unfortunately, I did this a little while ago, uh, but right here on yours, this box is probably black. Okay. So I want you to click on that box right there. Now, I'm moving a little bit out of my way. You don't need to, at least in this situation, I don't. But you see how I moved it. I went up to this area right here, pressed and held the left mouse button and moved it. What I want you to do is come down to this basket down here, and I want you to pick sort of a light tan, like that, okay? It's not really white, but it's a color from the object. And click on OK. Now, we're going to come up here and we're going to draw our bounding box. So I'm going to come up here. I'm in the white. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down. And I'm going to draw a nice big box here. And you saw how I did that. I went down and across. Now, I want you to notice something here. Because of the font size, this is too big. You see that it's coming down out of the box. So I'm going to click on the box here. And I'm just going to go ahead and carefully pull that in until it's in the box. Okay. 90 looks like it would work. Um, I think I had it at 85, so somewhere in that area. You're just going to slide that slider until you find, until it's in the box, okay? Next, big surprise, you're going to type your name. Oops, there. You notice what, because I'd been adjusting this, I typed in there, so I had to click here to move that back, okay? Don't panic. I know it's really light. We're not done yet. Okay, so you've typed in your name, great, and it's there. So the next thing I want you to do is we're going to apply a stroke to your name. Remember, a stroke, when we're talking about this, a decorative edge. So now with that still selected, click on that text layer if you want to. So I clicked on the type layer right here. Oops, don't want to change my name. Click on that there. Come down here, to, and this one, again, looks a little bit different. Instead of that FX, you see EFF. Click on that. Stroke. Now, this time, I want you to click on the color box. Again, you may need to move it out of the way. Doing it like that. Now, I want you to pick a nice dark bronze. But pick something that's in the picture. And then click on OK. And then click on OK. So, basically, just sort of an arty thing of making sure that the picture, that you use elements from the picture for any text in the picture. It just looks like it goes together better. Now, you should be able to see something that's wrong, okay? And I will tell you that if you turn this in, you'll be marked down for it because you need to do the next step. You're on the, the layer with your name. Click on Move and just pull it down a little. Make sure that your name is on the white page, not cut off like that, okay? Next thing, remember that you need to capitalize the first letter in both your first and last name. Okay, so make sure you do that. Okay, so far, to be honest, this is about almost done. We don't really have a whole lot more to do here. In fact, we don't have anything to do. So we're going to go ahead and export it, and we're going to upload it into Canvas. I'm going to click on File. I'm going to come down here to Export as JPEG. Now. I'm kind of worried, not really, but I'm kind of worried about the fact that this is cut off up here. It might be cut off. No, it won't be. So we're going to show you how to deal with that in a minute. A couple of things I want to show you over here. First off, like I said in the other one, leave the quality up to 100%. The only time you'd want to change this is if you want something to load faster on a web page. Leave this alone. Where would you want to change this? Sometimes on some web pages for like your avatar and stuff, you have, you're given a specific size that it has to be. And so that's where you might want to change this. It's all fine like it is right now. Just leave this one alone. Make sure that says 100%. Make sure the format says JPEG. And click on Save. 
great. Okay, now, I was worried about seeing that cut off at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Click on the upward pointed air, or a carrot. You need to do this anyway. So click on the carrot. Click on show and folder. Okay, a couple things here. So we see that our baskets file, we now have a JPEG of that. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that because I want to see what the JPEG looks like. Okay, in the JPEG, I see that my name is there and everything here looks fine. I don't see anything particularly wrong. What is Mr. Crawford looking for? Okay, he's obviously looking for two big bases here in the back. Things basically position like this. I want to see through these holes. I want to see stuff through these holes. Okay, basically that's, that's where you used where you deselected contiguous. I don't want to see excessive white around the edges of stuff. Okay, so it's ba this is okay. I'll, I will tell you that there's a tool in Photoshop that would have made this better, but it just isn't here in this one, but that's okay. So I've looked at the JPEG. I've said, yeah, that looks okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay, we're just about ready to turn it in. I'm going to come over here to turn it in. Okay, I'm going to actually go back real quick. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. I can close this now. I, I'm going to want to turn on student view so it looks like what you're looking at real fast. Okay, student view. I want to reset because I've already done this a couple of times with other classes. So where am I here? Computer one. Oh, there we are. Going the wrong way. Photoshop assignment, baskets. So I'm going to click on baskets. I'm going to click on submit assignment. I'm going to come down here, choose file. And I got absolutely no idea where it is. So I'm going to come up here, click there, and I'm going to type in the word baskets. Okay. Now, first off, you'll, you can easily tell the difference between because the JPEG can be viewed in a preview. The Photoshop documents cannot be viewed in a preview. Going back to what I said at the beginning, some of you got a zero on assignments that you know you turned in. I'll tell you what you did. You turned in the Photoshop document. I can't view it. Okay? You need to be turning in the JPEG. So, if, if, I, if you are one of those people, you have a zero, you went and looked, you turned it in, look real close and see if it's a PSD document. I'll bet you it is. So, just Go ahead and re-upload, this time upload the JPEG, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here. I'm going to click on open. Good, I'm going to click on, and it says right there, baskets.jpg. 10 because I have a whole bunch, because I've done to do this a bunch of times. Click on submit assignment. And confetti. Yay, confetti. Okay, and that was it. That was the entire assignment. I know this was a long one. Uh, so remember to stop and do a little bit, stop, watch, do a little bit. Okay. And have a great afternoon.